Welcome back to another episode of Harmonious at Lunch, the show that fuels your business success. I'm Brandon Gano, your host and guide through the world of harmonious business growth. Today, we're unlocking powerful strategies with industry experts to help your business thrive. If you're a business owner, entrepreneur, or executive, you are in the right place. Join me and our incredible guest today on the journey to clarity, growth, and success. It is time to revolutionize your approach to business. Let's dive in with another episode of Harmonious at Lunch. Welcome back. We got some more bite-sized business advice for you today. And I have a rock star with me. I have a quiz queen, which we have never featured on this show before. And I'm excited to bring Catherine O'Leary on the show. My business partner, Sean, was also on her podcast, Kickstart the Conversation. We'll make sure to link that down below in the show notes, wherever you're watching. But before we go any further, before we learn what a quiz queen is, let's welcome her to the show. Catherine, thank you for being here. Oh, thank you, Brandon, for having me. It's I'm I'm excited to be here and get to get talking about some disruption. I uh, yeah, we're gonna let's right off the bat, let's just disrupt the way people are thinking. If you're sitting in your car, sit down harder because we're gonna talk about how freebies are terrible for your business. That's right. We said it. I'm Catherine. I'm so tired of freebies. I'm so tired of seven dollar things and twenty seven dollar courses. Give me give me your take on this whole end of the marketplace before we make people upset. I mean, if you you can be upset, uh, <laughs> it just it won't help. Um, the The problem is, um, or the, the challenge. The challenge is, is that we're coming out of a a time when um, people have you know kind of gotten over the webinars, they've gotten over the the seven dollar things, the twenty seven dollar things. Not that those aren't still out there and and still. Um, you know, working somewhat, but they don't necessarily attract your ideal client. What we what we tend to be doing is training people to look for the discount or look for the lower ticket offer. Um, what I would rather do is actually look for my ideal client. Um, and that is somebody that is looking to create a client attraction system, looking to retain the clients that they currently have and, um, and build deeper relationships. So it's not about the $7 something something. Um, it's, it's really about building those relationships. And I think that as AI comes into play more and more, that human connection and that customization is going to be more important because at the end of the day, 80% of those free things that you download and, and you know, this, you've got that folder on your computer that, you know, you stuff all those downloads in, then you, you know, two years later, you're cleaning it out and you have no idea what was in there. You've never opened them again right? 80% of those are never opened again. So if they're not open, then that means that they're not doing their job, um, which is to educate and to get your ideal clients to know you better. And if they're not doing their job, then how do we, how do we move on and create something that does do that job of introducing you and your business to your clients and attracting your ideal clients to you so that you're not dealing with the freebie you know, seekers and the tire kickers all day long. Cause that's just a waste of time for both of you. Yeah. I mean, first of all, I didn't, I didn't know you've seen my computer cause uh, I do have that folder. I actually have, I'll do one better. I have that folder and I also have a bookmark on my bookmark bar of like websites I'd like to visit one day. And I do the same thing. I just go in and clear them out. So we know nobody's reading our freebies. We know that our ideal clients are not doing this. The center of today's conversation is really about getting away from lead generation and moving towards client attraction, which yeah. I think is the way to go. And you said something really, really interesting that I don't think enough people embrace, and that is human interaction. That's actually, that's how I grew and sold my last business. I refused to do anything that wasn't personal. And in that particular business, it happened to work out. Is it for everybody? No. But in this format with what we're, we're going to talk about today, I think it's really, really important to stand out from the crowd. So before we get there, I'm also curious to hear your take on the freebie is a lead magnet. And the lead magnet is designed, I don't think for the customer's benefit, it's to get the email address. Does that actually do harm when they know that they're just giving their email address and then you kind of spam them? with emails, like, does that actually deteriorate the relationship? Uh, uh, it's, hmm. it's a good question. I think it depends. I think it depends on whether or not you're attracting your ideal client to begin with. Mm. Um, so 
I would suggest that the the freebie that people are like, you know, just, you know, I'm just going to grab, like, I'm just going to throw in my email so I can get this one thing and I don't care about anything else. Probably not your ideal client because if they don't care about anything else, they're not going to take your course. They're not going to sign up for your one-on-one, -on -one, you know, uh, coaching or, you know, consulting, you know, they're, they're not probably the people for you. So I think that people are so focused on having these great big lists and in email lists and they're not focused on the quality of those email lists. So, you know, um, and there's a lot of ways to monetize your list. There's a lot of ways like affiliate marketing and so on. If they're not buying from you, they might buy from your JV partner. That's fine. But the primary goal of your list should be your business. So I, I would suggest make sure you're stacking you know, you're setting yourself up for success, stacking the deck in your favor and, you know, attracting those ideal clients to begin with um, and not wasting a whole bunch of time trying to vet, you know, your list, your own list of who's who's a good client and who isn't. Yeah, I agree with that. And something I've actually found, um, I, I'm not sure if you found the same thing, is we work with predominantly seven, eight figure revenue businesses and they don't necessarily always have their ideal clients. So I'm I'm curious to hear your feedback. What are some of the ways you go about actually identifying and then attracting your ideal clients? Well, I think that it it's less about what blueprint you have or what checklist you have, like what what your how is, you know, what like how you do things. I think it's less about that and more about understanding what your what your ideal client's 3 a.m. question is. You know, when it comes to the solution that you have. So what are they waking up, you know, wondering about or desiring? So if you're a business coach, you know, maybe maybe you take people from six to seven figures um, or seven to eight figures, as is Brandon, you were saying, you know, what what is that question that they're waking up with that's on their mind that they know that they are struggling with? And how can you kind of, you know, grab their attention and, and stop the scroll with um, a quiz hook that actually talks about that 3 a.m. question. Um, so you want to grab, again, it's your ideal client, not everyone. That's, that's another you know mistake that people make. Um, it's their problem, not, not what you want to solve, but their actual problem that they're dealing with right now. And it's in their language. So one of the um, one of the examples I give is that, you know, as somebody that delivers quiz funnels, that's my how. Um, and I can guarantee you that almost nobody on the planet, except for me and maybe two other people, probably one other person, um, and maybe not even, no one wakes up wondering how can I optimize my quiz funnel? <laughs> that is not a 3 a.m. question, Brandon. It's just not. Like, it's just, it's a good point. That's, not a, that's not a 3 a.m. question. The 3 a.m. question for my clients is, you know, tends to be, how can I get more qualified leads? How can I stop losing time? Um, you know, vetting people that aren't ready for me. How can I retain my clients? Because it's five times more expensive to go out and find a new client than to keep an original, like, you know, one of the clients in, in your system um, and in your community. Those are the types of, of questions that my clients wake up with. And that's what I want to lead with, with, um, you know, how can you close that, that gap between, you know, what they, you know, what the clients want and the solution that you have or the problem that they have and the solution that you're offering. Yeah, that's a good tip because I think we get too focused on our, our how or our vehicle, whatever that may be. And we try to almost force that down people's throats instead of, like I said before, the, the topic of today, attracting your ideal clients, answering that question. That's, that's a good, yeah. that's a gold nugget from the episode. Answer your client's 3am question and you'll, you'll see growth. So We've mentioned it a number of times. We've teased it now. I've heard of quizzes. I've heard of funnels. I've never heard of a quiz funnel. You are the quiz queen. What? <laughs> first, for, tell me, what is what is the quiz queen? What does that mean? <laughs> what does that mean? Well, um, so I'm Canadian, so I get to you know play around with the Commonwealth um, a little bit more than most people. But I um, I actually spent 30 years in in corporate in market research and consumer insights. Um, that's a really fancy way of saying I asked a ton of people globally, a ton of questions and was um, a translator of what they were saying and what they were, you know, what they were telling us and then translating that into what corporations could use for 
product innovation, you know, um, bundling conversations, uh, targeting, marketing. Um, and I, you know, I worked with some big names, including Apple and Adobe and uh, Pepsi. So, um, you know, basically what those corporations do really well is listen to their ideal clients um, and really understand where the trends are going. Like, you know, what, what's the next flavor of Doritos? What's the next, you know, thing for uh, Pepsi? Um, so what entrepreneurs tend to do is create a solution based on a problem that they've overcome and then try to look for the people that also have that same problem. But they tend to forget that they're on the other side of the problem, so they talk about it differently. So you need to go back to the original of how your ideal clients are talking about their problem. And then you got to be really, you got like, it's, there's a lot of white noise out there and people are confused and they, they're waking up 3 a.m. They want, they want to sleep. They want to get the answer. They're not hiding from you. They just can't find you because they're not connecting the dots between that problem and your solution. So how do you make that as easy as possible? Um, and as you know, relevant to the individual, and this is where quizzes are able to be, you know, customized and, and personalized because you're able to say, oh, well, you know what, as, as somebody that's going from six to seven figures, there's a couple of things going on in that, you know, there's maybe it's mindset, you know, maybe there's some tech stuff, maybe there's team, uh, conversations that need to be had delegation, leadership, that kind of thing. Where Brandon are you? in that, you know, in that particular journey. And let's talk about that specifically. Um, and, and the cool thing with quizzes is that you've set it up so that it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. So Brandon, just based on, you know, how you go through the questions, you know, you hit one of the, you know, four solutions, you feel like I've used every single question in the toolkit to figure out, you know, exactly what's going on with your business. I might use one, maybe two questions. But, you know, I've asked enough questions. I've listened to you now. I'm meeting you where you're at. And then I invite you to the next step. I invite you to the masterclass, to the sales call, to the, you know, to the webinar, whatever, whatever that looks like for you um, to continue the conversation. Because now we've actually had a, you know, a decent conversation about what you need, what I can provide. You've gotten value. If you walk away right now, you've gotten a solution to your 3 a.m. question, or at least part of a solution, and you know where to go for next steps. And that's all free. That's still a freebie, right? That's still that's still a free thing, but you're doing it with micro commitments and you're doing it within 60 seconds and you're getting an answer in real time. I, I love this. And okay, so if you're watching, you can see behind me, you see an upside down question mark. That is our company's logo. And this is why I'm I'm jamming out on this with Catherine. We love questions. Catherine loves questions because they're the foundation of, of a conversation. You can't, the difference between questions on a quiz and a sales funnel, a traditional funnel, is you're telling somebody what they're feeling and you're trying to you know, project on them that you know how they're feeling. You flip that around. You, Catherine, have flipped that around and you are asking them questions to build, to start the conversation in their head, even though it's with a computer, but you've you've built the foundation of a relationship, and that's brilliant. So let let's unpack how you do this with a quiz. What does that look like when someone actually? How about this? If you want to go and see what Catherine's quiz is, you can go to quizformybiz.com. If you're listening, it'll be in the show notes down below. Um, but Catherine, unpack this for me. So when you're designing a quiz, what what are you focused on? And then where does that take people on the other side? So the, we talked about the 3am question, mm -hmm. right? We've talked about the solutions where like, you know, you need to know where they're going. Are they going to your course or your call? Or, you know, maybe, maybe it's a combination. Your cool, your cooler leads go to um, a webinar and your hot leads go into your, you know, your calendar, whatever that looks like. The quiz questions themselves are the stepping stones between those two things, right? So as they jump from that 3 a.m. question of how do I get to seven figures? What maybe it's, you know, what's the biggest hurdle stopping me from seven figures? Okay, well, let's tell a story now. Let's let's have that call it the coffee chat. 
Like if you sat down with a friend at, at a cop, like, you know, for coffee and they said, I'm really stuck. I'm having a problem with this. And as a business coach, what are the four or five or maybe eight questions that you ask to understand better before you ever would even contemplate offering a solution? There's a few questions that you probably ask a few general questions and then maybe more specific to the actual, you know, 3am question. So what does that story look like? Well, it might look like, you know, how long have you been in business? What kind of business are you in? Are you in e-commerce? Are you coaching? Are you online? Like bricks and mortar? What does that look like? Um, what have you, you know, done to get to six figures? What have you tried to get to seven figures? Why do you think that didn't work? Um, you know, what do you think your biggest challenge is out of this list of challenges? Oh, okay, Brandon, based on this conversation and the answers that you've just given me, and you have now kind of gone with me along the path, right? You're, you're now like, oh, this is what I've tried. This is where I am. Yeah, I did that. I didn't do that. Um, oh, I didn't even think of that. And then, you know, at the end of it, you know, I can say, you know what, Brandon, here's the deal. Um, there's a lot going on here, but your biggest priority or your biggest hurdle right now is, is building a team. And that's really hard to go from somebody that's, you know, used to wearing all the hats to building a team. And here are a couple of the challenges you're probably dealing with. Here are a few solutions. And if you want to learn more, let's, let's have another conversation about it because there's, there's more to unpack here. There's, there's all about, you know, it, there's all about mindset, but you know, if all you walk away from is, you know, a couple of solutions to help you um, with the, you know, your particular issue with this, um, you know, getting seven figures, then you're good. That's awesome. So um, I, I have visited the quiz and I will be taking it after this episode and you should too, if you're listening or watching. And this is just because I'm a nerd and I, I know the tech that you're using, the software that you're using. Do you send people to different, um, different offers or different services or is it all kind of geared back towards, okay, here's the general solution, book a call, or do you actually send people to multiple different places? It depends on your business. It depends on where you are in your marketing calendar for the year. Hmm. Um, so the, the really cool thing about quizzes, especially at the back end, if you leave the conversation about what the next steps are in the quiz, pretty general, like just, you know, click below to find the next step. Um, then that next step can be, you know, a webinar if you're in the middle of a launch. If you aren't in the middle of a launch, then maybe it's going to, you know, a recording or a call or, you know, whatever it is. Or you might actually have a setup where, as I said, you know, really hot leads that are like, wow, Brandon is like ready to go. He's got money. He's got the intention. I want to make sure that I get on a call with him in the next, um, in the next week. You go straight to the calendar. Whereas, you know, Deborah coming through, she's like, ah, I'm not really sure. Uh, I know I need this, but I'm not sure if it's now. Maybe she goes to you know, a sales page for, a, um, you know, a 497 offer or something like that. Um, but you can you can mix and match as as you need to. But you need to know where you want to kind of generally send them um, when you're building the quiz, because it's going to help you actually, you know, create the language for the quiz. Right. And that goes back to the beginning of, of attracting your ideal client, understanding who they are, what they would potentially need. It all it all builds on itself. So, um, yeah, that's really good advice. I can nerd out on this for like 12 hours with you, which we don't have time to do. But um, I am curious. So we talked about getting away from lead gen and moving towards client attraction. The question still remains, at least for me, how are we getting people to the actual quiz because that yeah. would definitely attract people we're building relationships like everything from there on fantastic i am curious though how you get people to the quiz in the first place you drop it everywhere right so quizformybiz.com happens to be the url that i use i've had several quizzes behind that url so i can i can switch out the quiz if i need to if i've, if I've created a new one um, but that's something that I can drop. I can drop from stage. It's easy to remember. It's easy to spell. Um, and I can drop it from stage. I can drop it in networking. I can use it in social media posts. I can use it on emails. Um, I can, I mean, I dropped it in the grocery store the other day because somebody asked me what I did for a living and that's what I, I sent them to that. Um, so what I love about quizzes is that they're platform agnostic. They work with anything because they basically take you know, that 3am question and take them to another, 
you know, another site where they're actually doing the questions. It also gives you a little bit more leeway in the questions that you can ask, like social media. There are some terms and some um, topics that are taboo and you can handle them a little bit better um, on a quiz platform like Interact or even JotForm, um, you know, the technology also, you can always find a technology solution to fit your budget. Um, and I have a couple of partners that I, I recommend, but um, you know, you can, there, there's lots of ways to get the technology to work. I'm more concerned about making sure that the story, the 3M question works, the story works to your solution, um, and that you're actually attracting those ideal clients that are ready to convert. That's yeah. It's, yeah. This is so awesome. I, I love this topic. And it's like I said, I've never heard of it before. I've heard of funnels. I've heard of quizzes, but to use this to build a relationship and get away from just mass lead gen, I think is a, a brilliant strategy. So um, Catherine, I, I appreciate you coming on and sharing your story, your journey around, around quiz funnels, me and the quiz queen. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And just remember also to follow up. You can always have your email sequence automated for each of those uh, different outcomes and the fortunes and the follow-up. So always follow up. That is correct. That is what I'm terrible at. So for you listening and watching, make sure you follow up. Don't be dumb like me. And then you can use quiz funnels to grow your business too. Um, Catherine, thanks again. This was awesome. Wherever you're watching or listening, make sure you subscribe. All of Catherine's details, including the link we've been mentioning, is down in the show notes in the description. We will see you on the next episode of Harmonious at Lunch for some more bite-sized business advice.